Welcome. Hi, this is Carol from SkillCheck. And today I'd like to talk about an interesting topic, I think, for you. And to learn how to not be a manager puppet and really learn how to manage your storage asset. So let's get started. Who's pulling your strings? And I can tell you, I've had a variety of managers, many managers, and then a variety of different types of managers over the years. And you know, some of them were driven by their customers. Some of them, uh, their assistant was stronger than they were, and they got upset when they used a wrong color pen, <laughs> you know, all sorts of things. Um, sometimes vendors, you know, would be involved in it. And I'm thinking, even like the landscaping, I'm like, who trimmed these back so far? And they go, oh, that's the way the landscapers like to do it. <laughs> like, well, wait a minute. When it looks like there's nothing there, it's no longer a plant that looks really beautiful. So, and also the owner or area manager. And, and it really, it's learning how to respectfully speak up and give your opinion. So let's talk more about that. Learning to control or controlling or those demanding customers. Let's start there because I think there are occasions where self-storage managers and assistants allow really strong customers to take control of things. And I don't mean like running the store, I mean about how things operate, that they want it done differently or they need this extra this or extra that. Now, sometimes we want to do that. That might be a perfect thing for you to do. Um, I've had a lot of pharmaceutical reps that, but they had to be controlled. <laughs> they had to make sure that they didn't think that they could, you know, be in the loading dock where there's only allowed two cars for six hours of the day. They, we had to really put some um, controls on it. But you want to also worry about things that people are doing that they shouldn't be doing and that they're sort of controlling you and or fooling you that, oh, we're not living in the space, but they really are. Or being poor neighbors with other storage customers. Sometimes people move their stuff and they put it or they park their car right in front of someone else's space. And then that customer can't get to it. And I, I will tell you an interesting story because I was at a storage property uh, in the Sacramento area. And I was working with the manager and the manager said, oh, oh no, those two are not. And we're watching the videos and a man takes a crowbar out of his truck and he slams the um, it onto the, his front windshield. And so the manager's like, oh, I gotta get down there. I'm like, no, call the police, call the police. I'll go down there, you call the police. We've gotta work this thing out. You really wanna make sure that people are working together with each other and not being poor neighbors with their other storage customers because some of those people, you may have to get rid of them if they're being problematic or not following the property rules because we all have to have rules, especially with big stores or even little stores. You, you know, People start taking advantage of things, whether it's living in the store space or whatever they wanna do or working out of it or just visiting it for many hours a day, they tell you, oh, I'm not, I'm not living here, I'm just um, staying here hour hours upon hours <laughs> i don't know it's just crazy but you need to have a plan and work your plan and one of those plans should be to make sure that rules so you have rules and they're a must i like to call them be a good neighbor and you can find that like insightlink has a sample one but i want to i always like instead of saying do not do not do not you may not and that i said be sure to keep your dogs inside the car and dogs and kids, both of those can get in trouble. Be consistent with your management though. Think about that because you don't wanna give someone just all kinds of leeway or you, you know, someone looks and sees that someone else is living there, they think, shoot, I can live there or they tell their friends that they can live there. And then all of a sudden you've got a really big problem. So make sure, you know, you can do some exceptions around there, but be careful about it because it could backfire on you. But don't also be an office rat. I sometimes, <laughs> I've had managers, they they are amazing managers, but they love they, to stay in the office. They don't like to get out on the property. And that's just what you have to do. Part of self-storage is getting in and out. And for me, that's the beauty of it also, because it's a plus, because you get to work indoors. And you know what, there are times that I'm like, okay, I need some fresh air. <laughs> I need to go outside and, and take a, you know, do lock check or take a spin around so you can see if everyone's okay. But you wanna be able to do that. And even if it's an interior building, you should be walking those halls. It's 
really important. And never show a dirty space to a prospective customer. I always like to include that because I can't tell you how many times I've mystery shop places and they show me a dirty space. You know, if I, when I was looking at this picture here, I was wondering, kind of, what, what made them think to paint the doors half one color, three quarters one color and a an, quarter the white? I found that really interesting. And the cart looks pretty good. I don't know about the back. I think that should be more organized, but the front looks pretty good in this cart. Think also about awkward and problematic situations. When sometimes you're giving a free space or um, more time to move out, those can be, especially if other tenants overhear that or other people find out that you've done something like that, but you can do those, but think about using those sparingly. And also theft at the property from other customers. That is certainly a problem that we come across. You have to really watch that because then you, if you know if you, or you suspect or you know that someone is thieving from the space, I think you need to address that and talk to the owner, talk to your supervisor, find out what do you wanna do from here? Shall we, you know, give them a notice to move out what, or go up on their rent, uh, lock them out? You know, they're, oh, they're only allowed access during office hours. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do differently. And don't worry about treating customers differently because that, you know, it, and that can be awkward. I, and I don't mean in a way that um, you're always nice to Susie and you're not very nice to Sam. And the idea of this is try to treat everyone the same in generally, <laughs> but there will be customers you treat differently just because if they're problematic, you may have to have different rules for them. And remember, if you have a dirty property, customers are also going to keep that dirty. They don't, they're not gonna care as much. The cleaner you keep the store, the cleaner the customers will keep it. Um, so treating customers differently, yes, you may. Uh, and, and I think that generally speaking, a lot of our pharmaceutical reps get a little bit more um, I don't know, maybe some preferential treatment, but they're in there so often then they get to know us. Um, and you know, I, I'd say you might treat some differently, but try to treat everyone with respect and kindness and friendliness. Also think about, you know, your dirty property, again, is going to cause more problems than if you keep it cleaner. And customers, dogs and kids running around, I talked about that, be very careful. Otherwise bad things will happen. How about handling the use of restrooms? One of the things that I can, I wanna start out by saying is I had a customer, uh, a client in uh, Sacramento and I looked at the plans they were wanted to, prior to building. They said, here, here are our plans, what do you think? And I said, well, where are the restrooms? I don't see the restrooms for the customers. And I'm looking at, the, I'm, I looked at several, I'm thinking, like, I, I can't find a bathroom anywhere except in the office. And she goes, oh yes, we're only gonna have a bathroom in the office. And I said, so what happens after hours when the customer needs to go to the bathroom or something. And then they said, well, they're out of luck. And so she decided just to keep it in the office. And later on, <laughs> she ended up getting a porta potty because uh, people were leaving her gifts in the hallways, in the driveways, um, peeing on the the outside roll up door. <laughs> I've watched customers do that myself. I went by, by this one guy, I was like, hello, sir, the restroom upstairs, you can use that. You don't use your neighbor's door. <laughs> what kind of business is this? This is the weirdest business ever, right? If you don't allow customers to use a restroom, they'll find a place then you might not like where that is. You might have to clean it up. Be proactive, look at this picture. <laughs> How old do you think this could possibly be? Or how long do you think it would take to get that many cobwebs and leaves and dirt in that? The cleaner you keep the property, the cleaner the customers will keep it. And start rentals outright at the very beginning. Instead of the rules, be a good neighbor and tell them that, you know, please pick up any of your trash that you leave out or, or anything like that. So that's really positive to keep them and knowing what to do. And you know, remind people that they can't live or loiter in the space. And I know sometimes people say, oh, I'm not living here. I'm just, you know, looking at my stuff and going through my stuff and, and just staying here a little bit and then I go back out. Well, that's, that's really, they're trying to live out of it, whether they say yes or no. And believe me, there have been some very bad situations in self-storage where people have burned up inside the space by using heaters in their space and it just causes problems and you don't want that on your conscience, I guess, if you think about it. Try, you know, keep a good 
property going and keep it monitored and make sure that no one's living and working out of there or whatever. I know my daughter got the creeps because she would go in the basement of one this one place and this guy rolled up his door and he, he had an office thing set up there and come to find out his wife had kicked him out of the house. And so, and he was on the phone in front of his desk and there was some like a little sleeping bag and some other stuff there. He said he wasn't living out of it, but he clearly was. But you have to get rid of those customers. And I like to just go up on their rent and make it you know, almost impossible to stay. <laughs> Remind customers with signs about the office and access hours too, because they don't always remember those access times and then they end up getting stuck in there if you don't allow them out after, you know, with their code on the way out. Also think about improving your sales and customer service skills. And we do that at Skill Check through mystery shopping. And I know, I guess uh, years ago in the 80s, I learned that, wow, it was so critical that managers can sell on the phone because the space just doesn't sell itself. And now even more so because we have so many competitors, you have to be stellar on the phone with not only your sales, but also your service once customers do rent from you. So you want to make sure that you listen to sales and service training like this today. It's a really good thing to do and practice selling. And I know that sounds kind of weird. You think, well, why, why, how do I practice selling? Well, I, I practice singing. So if you I mean, practice selling is an important thing to do. Just go through and practice with you. Or even when you're on the phone and you're talking to someone, see, think, oh, I forgot that. I forgot that. We've got a checklist. If you want that, you can let us know and we'll send you a checklist of things to say during the phone call. It's a guide. It's really nice too. Also monitor your online reviews. You've got to watch your online reviews weekly. You can't let them go months and months without interacting with them. And be sure to respond to all of the reviews, not just your favorite ones or not just the bad ones. You make sure, you know, thanking people for good reviews also. And don't take the reviews personally. And I, I can tell you, I, I know a few times where I've, I've been speaking and they especially with my ex-husband, they were like, you guys should have, you know, coordinated your outfits. It would have looked better. <laughs> I was like, what kind of review is that? Yeah, I have to now wear the same kind of colors that he wears that don't look good on me. I wear my colors that look good, I guess. But don't take those reviews personally. And you should have someone else respond to the reviews if you are, if you are sensitive about it. Just say, you know what, I'm really not good at this. Maybe someone at the home office could do it. And that would be all right too. And don't have a big argument either over uh, online over with reviews. Be careful about that. Also, one of the things that I find causes some of the most trouble is the follow through. And this customers get anxious and frustrated about this and owners and supervisors get mad when things aren't done the way they should be done. And I really love this picture from Sue Haviland. <laughs> and I thought somebody I'm gonna use that so I kept it, but I, but I found it really interesting because I'm looking at that whole little setup there. So it's got the bolts going into the cinder block but that must not work very well. And it's should it's got the customer's lock on it, and then it's got an overlock on it. But somehow the scissors come into that because the bolt must be coming out, or uh, it maybe you, you could jiggle it and open it up. <laughs> so they figured how to put the scissors in there. I don't know. I would probably fix the entire mechanism <laughs> there with your supervisor owner. Make sure you're really working and following through on your auctions your tasks, the tasks that are given to you, preventative maintenance, and to-do items. If you've got a list of to-do, and I keep a list of to-do all the time, and I see it grows and then I throw it away and I'm thinking, oh, just I forgot that put this one from the last one. But think about all of those things because it's really important for you to remember a lot because you've got a lot of customers most of the time, right? I've, got, I've had stores with 2,000 units in them. It's hard to remember all of that. You've got to, if a customer comes in and says, hey, you know, can you get the overlock off my space? I'll be in tomorrow. And then you forget and they're in there before you're in there. Then, you know, they're upset and they leave a bad review. So some of the things with the delinquent customers following through, removing those locks, overlocking when you should, replacing light bulbs, that's been a huge issue over the years. We People complain, and I've seen a lot of complaints in, on social media that the you know they can't see it's so dark in there, and the manager, they've asked four or five times and nobody does anything. And also the gate code not working. That's another big problem we have. And if we have problems with our gates, we need to find a place that can fix them. 
and we need to do it right away because customers don't like the fact that they can't get in and out without going into the office and asking for help, especially, you know, if they can get in and out other hours than your store is open, your office is open. Also think about owning your own mistakes. You know, this isn't easy, right? Because when you make a mistake, you think, oh boy, everybody's gonna know or whatever. <laughs> Mistakes are always forgivable if one has the courage to admit it. And that was from Bruce Lee. I think, how many things could I have found from Bruce Lee quotes? But this was a good one, I thought. But you want to communicate when you've made an error. And if that's a, a gate code issue, you put it in wrong, say, you know what? I really apologize. I put the number in correctly, or I didn't write your card, you know, write the correct number on your card. Um, I like to, when a person moves in, I like to walk them out to the gate, put the gate code in, show them how to use it, and open the gate with the code so I know right then that it, there that it works instead of they say oh I'm in a hurry I don't need it well it, you should still sometime go out there and make sure that code works because sometimes it doesn't also if you forgot uh, to remove an overlock that's another thing that we forget a lot we put on the overlocks and then we forget to take them off and once they've paid so you need to make a list and keep that list working and if you forgot to take off that um, lock that you have like in a new rental that's another thing is we put those locks on the rentals and then we forget to take them out. And I, I know I had one in particular in Northern California and the people came in on the weekend and it was outside the hours that the managers were there and they had a whole crew of people and they couldn't get in and they kept trying to call the phone numbers. No one answered the phone numbers. And so I paid for the truck for an additional day and I paid for the pizza. I paid for a bunch of stuff. I, I, gave, I gave them, I think it was like $250 at the end of it because I did not want to get a bad review. And we did make a mistake. The manager said, oh yeah, I, I made the, I did the rental right before five and I forgot to go take the lock off. And that's how simple that can be. She didn't mean to do it, but boy, did she make a lot of people mad. <laughs> so think about those things. Also be sure to, um, fix the issue or contact them, you know, the manager or owner. Uh, if you make a mistake, you let people know. Also make notes in the customer's file because you've done something wrong once before, or you've left something on before, or you've given them uh, a freebie rental a lot, or where you've forgiven their late fees several times. Don't worry about that. Just make a note in the computer. And then that way the, the next person or next time you look, you'll think, you know, I've already like waived four fees for these people. <laughs> they, they shouldn't get in more fee waves. They keep coming up with some good excuse of why they should get a fee wave. Gain the trust with customers and coworkers. You want to be more active and interactive um, when with you and your supervisor, your owner, your customers, interact with them. That's gonna make you the best and most successful manager is interacting and making sure you're communicating with people and not always being afraid, or this is my scaredy cat here, <laughs> afraid of like, uh-oh. And look, you can look at that cat and say, uh-oh, something's wrong. It's got its hair up and it's got its ears back. And I think sometimes where you don't know it or people and customers and supervisors, the owner, whoever, when they look at you, they can see if you're like this scaredy cat here, this cat here, that's maybe not afraid of, but maybe mad. But the idea is that gain the trust and work with people and try not to be so sensitive about any kind of feedback because it is really important to get feedback to improve, right? to be really to be a successful storage manager, successful in life. The other thing is to be calm, cool, and collected. And I put a picture of my old horse here. Uh, his name is Double Shot of Gin. He was, it doesn't look very big right there, but he's 18 hands high. He's a big horse. And one of the things you do, what I've always heard in horsemanship is be calm, cool, and collected. When you're on a horse, when you're working with a horse, uh, if you're agitated, the horse knows it. And that's the same thing with a customer coming in. So you want to make sure you stay calm at all times and don't let them get under your skin. And sometimes it's just easier said than done to, for me to say that sitting here when people are yelling at you and angry at you and throwing things around. <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a whole lot of stuff. Um, but try to be positive. You want to try to keep the conversation positive. And remember, also, you should listen carefully and don't rise to their level of being angry. 
and just maybe they simply wanted to vent, uh, be empathetic about it. I know with my kids sometimes I come home or I'm mad. <laughs> I'm already home. <laughs> what the heck am I talking about? <laughs> I don't work in an office anymore. I work out of my home. But when the kids are around them, they're like, uh oh, mom's mad. Stay away. They know, like, stay, stay away. She says, let her calm down. Once she, once she's calm, she'll be fine. But you also want to demonstrate that you understand the issues and that you understand what's going on and come up with solutions quickly. Don't just say, I'll get back to you next week or next month, you know, try to solve something quickly and, and yeah, just for the customer's good. Right. And you want to make sure you take it seriously and not personally, how you take a situation in means a whole lot. And if you try to be calm and keep them calm, it will really help you make a huge difference in your day too. how much you enjoy doing what you do. But remember not to be a puppet. I want you to know the self-storage business. I want you to continue to grow and learn and listen to learn and go to uh, state shows, go to ISS and SSA shows, the national shows. It, I know managers that get out and do those things. It's not like if you've, even if you've been in storage years and years, I go to sessions and I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. Or I, I think, oh, I forgot about that. I should really do that. <laughs> but remember, work your plan daily and enjoy it and care about your job. And I love this picture of this lady and from Metro Self Storage here, she looks so happy and she just looks like she loves her job and she can actually touch the side of there that, and not get her hands dirty, <laughs> which is amazing. But you want to care about the customer storage experience and think positively. And sometimes we're on our own and we can be our worst enemy in our thoughts and our actions. And you don't wanna be that way. And you want to be positive and upbeat. And even if you have to do that for yourself, maybe in the morning when you get to the store and you're getting ready to open up, put on some good music, put on whatever music you enjoy and get the place clean and, and ready to go and then start your day out right. Well, thank you so much for listening. My name again is Carol Mixon from Skillcheck. And uh, you can reach me at 800-374-7545. And um, if you call us, you can get a free mystery shop if you'd like one. Um, and I'd also love if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't have any mini subscribers yet, but someday I will um, get close to my kids, how many they have. So uh, someday, someday I will get there and I'll have a party. But thank you so much for listening. And if you have anything you'd like to talk about, uh, let me know. Thanks a lot. Bye.